about as much chance of that as a man I of mine. I think. So it's interesting. I'm trying to take the streets of it. Adorable boy in the corner. Come on, shoot. Let's start with us. Was he stewed? So I got to gauge his father. Daddy, about your talking machine. I can't believe it. Don't be so tired. And I didn't find out till the next day that he was the principal. <laughs> Hi, David. Well, you finally got here. I'd say we're just in time. Hi, kiddo. David Cunningham, at your service, miss. Harper. Myra Harper. Miss Harper? Where have you been hiding? Until recently. Uh, David, it's Myra's first mixer. We thought it would be nice to, uh, introduce her around. Oh, well, I'm sure we can do that for her, couldn't we, David? Well, I think she'd rather dance. Well, I am anxious to meet everybody. <laughs> but the music is so nice. Maybe I would like to dance. See you later. Why couldn't you have been just a little bit later? Right here, born and bred. Oh, lucky. I just know I'm gonna love New York. I'd be glad to show you around the city. Well, thank you. Do you like the theater? I go whenever I have a chance. Last week I saw John Barrymore in The Fortune Hunter. Well, I'm really more interested in sports. I'm the first string quarterback on our school team. Oh, that's just wonderful. Myra. Hello, Lila. We're going for some ice cream in a little while. Do you want to come along? Why, I don't know. David? Whatever you'd like, Myra. Okay. Well, so much for the Dean signed up yesterday. I'll miss you so much, Myra. I can't bear to think about losing you. You're not gonna lose me, sweetheart. I'll, I'll be back before you know it. You will be careful, darling. I promise. I'll get us some punch. Isn't Joe Lokeen in his uniform? Hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna do when he's gone. Oh, I'm sure you'll think of something. Lila, really? <laughs> you forget, Mara, I've seen you stuck on boys before. This is different. He's going off to fight. That sobers a person up. I mean, the whole experience has given me a much more serious outlook on things. Hello, Lila. How are you? Exhausted from watching Myra carry the torch for you. <laughs> well, then, what about the Coconut Grove or the Midnight Frolic? Mm, I'd rather go to the Palais Royale. <laughs> Darling, that's getting so old. Ron. They must all seem old to you, Myra. Oh. <laughs> Look, why don't we start at the Red Room and go from there? Let's go, Senek. Hey, Knowlton? Hello. Hello, how are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Knowlton, do you know everyone? Uh, good evening. Good Hello, to see Nolton. you. Hello. I haven't had the pleasure. I thought everyone knew you, Myra. Knowlton Whitney, Myra Harper. Hello, Knowlton. How do you do? Much better, thank you. Well, I've got to be going. I hear there's a wonderful new band at Happy Roans. 
Why don't you join us? Hey, happy Rones. That's a great Let's idea. Go. Why didn't I think of that? I couldn't intrude. Don't be silly. Besides, I need someone to teach me the new steps. I'm afraid I'm not a very good dancer. I'm sure you have great potential. Well, I really don't think that we I... We won't uh... take no for an answer, darling. <laughs> She's really something. Not a line. <laughs> Nopton better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd been a senorita or a mademoiselle or something. Good gracious, what is there to do once you've come out except marry and retire? Nothing. Do it. I can't seem to get interested, Lila. I've played around so much that even while I'm kissing a man, I wonder how soon I'll tire of him. I never get carried away like I used to. Well, take it from me. Do not get married unless you are absolutely through playing around. It means giving up an awful lot, you know. Through? I'm tired of my whole pointless existence. <laughs> Up at New Haven last spring, the men I danced with seemed like little boys. I overheard a girl in the dressing room say, there's Myra Harper. She's been coming up here for eight years. Of course, she was about three years off, but it did give me the calendar blues. You and I went to our first prom when we were 16. Some men are even afraid of me. Isn't that odd? Oh. One man dropped me like a hotcake after coming down from Morristown for three straight weekends. Some kind friend told him that I was husband hunting this year, and he was afraid he'd get in too deep. Well, you are husband hunting, aren't you? I suppose so. After a fashion. Here's my advice. Pick out the best thing in sight. The man who has all the mental, physical, social, and financial qualities you want. And then go after him hammer and tongs. The way we used to. Now, after you've got him, do not say to yourself, well, he can't sing like Billy, or I wish he played better golf. You can't have everything. Just shut your eyes, turn off your sense of humor, and then after you're married, it'll be very different, and you'll be mighty glad. I've heard that advice before. But to tell you the truth, darling, I have decided to go after someone. Who? Have you ever met Knowlton Whitney? You know what a whiz he is on looks. And his father's worth a fortune, they say. Hmm. I hear his parents keep him on a pretty short leash. Believe me, I may be a bit blasé, but I can still get any man I want. You really want him? Yes. As much as I've ever wanted anyone. He's smart as a whip. And he's shy, rather sweetly shy. Well, Myra, I'd wish you luck, except somehow I don't think it's going to be necessary. He is a very modern of a major modern general. He is a very modern of a modern major general. <laughs> I love that show. God, they, they always seem better when I'm with you. I'm glad we both like the theater. That's just a small part of it. Working in Wall Street is... Well, it's the one place I really feel comfortable. Except when I'm with you, of course. It seems like a lot of responsibility to me. Well, I do get to do a lot more when Father's away. Um, he likes things done in a certain way when he's here. When will you be going out on your own? Well, the experience I'm getting now is quite valuable. I doubt I could learn nearly as much working anywhere else. When are your parents returning? I'm not sure. Once Mother gets to Europe, it's hard getting her home again. She uh, enjoys rubbing shoulders with royalty. The title is very important to some people. Hmm. I'd love to meet them. <laughs> yeah, yes, of course. 
Tell me more about your work. Hmm. I've been talking about myself too much already. But darling, you're my favorite subject. Myra, I can't tell you how much you mean to me. I've never felt this way before, either. I can't bear to be apart from you. It's so sudden, like a dream. One I never want to end. I want this feeling to last forever, my darling. I was trying to decide what to tell my parents. What to tell them? I mean, how to tell them. You see, they have some very strong ideas about who I am. Uh... They, they, they won't be able to resist you any more than I can. Norton, dear. Your letter said he'd be with you. Uh, he had some important business to attend to. It came up at the last minute. I should think meeting his future mother-in-law would be important, too. <laughs> well, his father is away, so naturally Norton had to handle it. But he promised he'd be here in two days. were alive, he'd be very upset. Dalton hasn't even properly asked for your hand. Do you think this would have influenced Daddy's disposition? <laughs> Do you really love him, Myra? At first, I wasn't sure. I think I went after him because he's such a good catch. They're very wealthy. 
but when I got to know him, oh, I found out what a good and gentle person he really is. He may be a little too influenced by his parents now, but he'll change. He knows what he wants. I love him very much, Mama. Really. Of course you do, Myra. <laughs> Well, a few days is one thing, but two weeks? What explanation does he give? He's having some difficulties at work. Oh, oh, shh, 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 shh. Hello, Myra. Hello, Aunt Vera. How are you, dear? Would you like me to get you something to eat, Myra? Just waiting for you. Nothing else I can do. That's why I'm so blue. And the stars that twinkle overhead each night, they try to tell me it's all right. But soon you'll be here by my side. Oh, can't you see? It's doing to me Darling, where can you be? Cause without you I'm so blue Can't you see What it's doing to me Darling, where can you be? Cause without you Hello. Hello, Myra. Oh, hello, Sally. How are you? Guess what? Jane is going to join us for lunch. Well, if you ask me, I think she was foolish not to marry that young lieutenant. Uh, what's his name? Joe. Such a sweet boy. And so handsome. He died in France. I thought that was the flyer. No, Mike was killed here in Ohio. An accident at Kelly Field. Twelve thirty is fine. Is the Regency Cafe all right? It's swell. Uh, I'll meet you there. Good. Bye. Bye. It's from Westchester. Not bad news, I hope. Milton's parents have returned. They want to meet me. He's not coming here. They're expecting me in Westchester on Friday. You'll go with her, of course, Louise. Well, I... Mama, I think it would be best if I went alone. Well, I am going to be busy with wedding plans. Well, I don't think it's proper. Aunt Vera, if I decide to do it, it's proper. You're lucky. So many of the women we see down at the settlement house are treated badly by their husbands. Oh. I can't imagine Knowlton ever doing anything like that. He is such a sweet dear. Believe me, Myra, there are plenty who aren't. I'm hopeful that will change now that we're going to get the vote. I can't see how the vote is going to change something like that. Oh, Myra, political power is the only thing that men understand. It'll give us some say over our destiny. I've always had that. And I didn't need the vote to get it. Oh, what do you think of this one? Isn't it beautiful? It's very nice. It's perfect. I just know his parents will love this. Sally, I'm sorry. Here we plan to have this nice chat over lunch and I drag you off shopping. It's just that I have to impress Knowlton's parents. It's very important to you, isn't it, Myra? It's the most important thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, I know what you're doing is important, Sally. But the only goal I've ever had is to get married. And I never thought I'd find somebody I'd really love till I met Knowlton. 
Well, I hope it all works out for you, Myra. Oh, it will. It will. Yes? Chauffeur's sick. I'm his son. You mean Mr. Whitney's chauffeur? Yeah. He only keeps one since the war. Great on economizing. A regular Hoover. Well, no use standing around here gabbing. Let's have your grip. You got any more bags? My trunk. Big car's broke. I have to use this one. A walk. Step in. I think I'll ride in the back if you don't mind. <laughs> well, surest thing, you know. I just thought that trunk bumping around back there might make you nervous. What trunk? Yawn. Oh, can't you make two trips? I'm sure Mr. Whitney... Nah, wouldn't allow it. Not since the war. Up to rich folks to set an example, that's what Mr. Whitney says. Let's have your check, please. Thank you. 
You must be Mr. Whitney. I'm Myra Harper. I'm... Yes, of course. Naturally, yes. I know, I know. I'm very glad to be here. Oh, you must be tired. A cindery, rickety, ghastly trip, I know. Tired, hungry, and thirsty. No doubt, no doubt. The servants in this house are frightfully inefficient. A little minute. Sixty seconds. Scarcely more. Here. Yeah. Sit down, sit down. I'll get you something. Sixty seconds at the outside. Well, sit down, sit down. Hungry from your trip. Poor girl. Poor little girl. Starving. Myra? Why, they didn't tell me you were here. Your father welcomed me. Ah. <laughs> Lordy, you must have gone upstairs and forgotten all about it. What did he insist on you eating that stuff? Why didn't you tell him you didn't want any? I don't know. Oh. Well, how are you, Myra? Uh. Fine, now. Oh. Darling, I'm sorry I wasn't here to welcome you. Have you been waiting long? Only a few minutes. Oh. Well, you mustn't mind father. He's forgetful and a little bit unconventional, but you'll get used to him. Oh, we'll be great friends. Uh, you, you must be exhausted. Let's get you settled. Oh, Monroe. Just show Miss Harper to her room. Uh, aren't you coming up with me? No. Uh, you go on up and have a rest, and I'll be up in an hour or so and get you for dinner. Glad to be here, Knowlton. I'm glad you're here, too.
<clears throat> this way, miss. These people certainly don't stay in one place very long. Almost ready, Myra. Is anything wrong, Knowlton? No. Why? You seem so distant. Almost as if you're not very glad I'm here. I'm sorry, darling. It was, uh, it was just such a shock seeing you sitting there in the hall all alone like that. You were expecting me, weren't you? Well, of course. <laughs> It's just that my schedule's been so hectic lately, and, uh... Oh, you smell so nice. Um, what with mother and father returning so unexpectedly, and... Well, if you're about ready now, we'll go in and see mother for a minute before dinner. Isn't she joining us? I can't imagine living in a place this gigantic. Who else lives in this wing? Our rooms are down this way. Mother? This is Myra. Myra? She's visiting us, I told you. Child. You want to marry my son? Yes, Mrs. Whitney. How old are you? 21, Mrs. Whitney. And you're from Cleveland? Yes, Mrs. Whitney. Ah. You'll excuse me if I don't appear downstairs, but when we're in the East, I seldom leave this room and my dear little dog. Well, you seem like a very nice girl. Come in again. Good night, Mother. Nine. Utterly charming, completely delightful. One big happy family. And you are the jewel of it, my dear. Oh, why, thank you, Mr. Whitney. 
It's an honor to be the jewel in your family. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Yes, I'm sure you have many talents, Myra. Knowlton tells me you're an excellent dancer. Oh, my partners make me look good. Oh, you're a charmer, all right. You know, it's been very lonely here, desolate with just us three. We'll expect you to bring sunshine and warmth with that peculiar radiance which is the efflorescence of youth. Oh, it's going to be quite delightful, quite delightful. Uh, do you say... Well, I have. I do. Some. Splendid. Magnificent. Uh, what do you sing? Do you sing grand opera, ballads, uh, popular music? Mostly popular music. Uh, Cora? Uh, didn't you forget? Yes, well, personally, I prefer popular music. Uh, you know, I think that I'm going to invite a few neighbors over. We're very friendly hereabouts. Oh, uh, Father, I really don't think that's necessary. No, I want them to meet Myra. I want them to meet this delightful jewel that's going to grace our little household. Father, eventually Myra and I will want to live here with you and Mother, but I think for the first two or three years, an apartment in New York would be more the thing for... Nonsense! Don't talk such utter nonsense. You live here, here in this house, do you understand? And no place else. After all, what's a house without children? Yes, but Father... Silence! If you expect any help from me, you'll get it here, here, under this roof and nowhere else, you understand? Is that clear? And as for you, my exquisite young lady, you better understand that the best thing you can do is to settle down right here. This is my home. And I intend to keep it so. Well. Good morning, darling. Ah, good morning. You sleep well? Mmm. Yeah. Would you like some breakfast? That sounds wonderful. I'm starved. Our family must seem a bit unusual. Well, I suppose all families seem a little odd the first time you visit them. Well, I've been brought up in a rather different sort of atmosphere, I suppose, but Mother's really quite normal outside her penchant for poodles in large quantities, and uh, Father, in spite of his eccentricity, seems to hold a secure position on Wall Street. <laughs> Must be difficult for them to accept someone who's here to steal away their only son. Oh. <gasps> Why, it's just a gardener, dear. Nolton, who lives in the room above mine? Because I'm almost sure I heard someone crying upstairs. It sounded like a child, Nolton. Well, there's no one up there. <laughs> it was either your imagination or something you ate. Um, or possibly one of the maids was being sick. Do they live upstairs? Ah, lovely, lovely, ah. lovely, lovely. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Bauer. Thank you. Oh, 
I think our neighbors are just going to fall in love with our little prize. Father, you didn't... Well, I had Monroe call up a few people. We sometimes give uh, informal little uh, things. Oh, it's going to be quite delightful. But I told you I... Oh, it's only a few friendly neighbors. Myra doesn't mind, do you, Myra? It's all right, Knowlton. You know I love parties. <laughs> Oh, uh, Cora, uh, could I have some uh, coffee, please? Uh, uh, Cora... I'm afraid the war has spoiled our domestic help. Don't you agree, Myra? Well... Knowlton? Yes? I've been thinking about your father's insistence that we live here. Isn't there some way of changing his mind? I think it's very important that we have our privacy, darling. Well, I'm not sure what he would do if I crossed him. He still has me on an allowance, a very generous one. Couldn't you go to work for another company? You have a lot of very good experience. I doubt I could earn enough to support us very well. Oh, Knowlton. You don't give yourself enough credit. I know you can do very well. And besides, once your father got used to the idea of us living alone, he'll change his mind. Well, perhaps I could talk to Mother. I'm not sure how she feels about it. Do you think so? Oh, darling, if she could convince your father, that would be wonderful. I love you so much, Knowlton. What is it? Nothing, darling. I love you, too. I'd begun to wonder if I'd ever hear you say that again. You've been acting so strangely ever since I arrived. I'd begun to wonder if you'd changed your mind about marrying me. Look, everything will be fine. I'll take care of it somehow. Yes, who is it? It's Myra Harper, Mrs. Whitney. How are you feeling? Much better, thank you. Especially since I've heard the news. News? Yes. Mr. Whitney told me that you and Knowlton will be living with us. Mrs. Whitney, that's just what I'm here to talk to you about. Has Knowlton spoken to you? Knowlton? Where is my Knowlton? I haven't seen him all day. I believe he's downstairs. Um, I'll ask him to come up. He wants to talk to you about... We'll have such fun. You can keep me company. We'll play cards together, and you can read aloud to me. We're going to be great friends, Myra.
must meet Mrs. Cavanaugh, one of our very dearest and oldest friends. She's Knowlton's godmother. Well, there she is, Myra Harper. Isn't she everything I told you? I'm pleased to meet you. Harper. By any chance are you related to Judge Harper of Saratoga? No, I don't think so. Pity. Of course, that Knowlton used to go around with one of the Vanderbilt girls. I can't think why he let her go. Pardon me. Myra, what's wrong? Who was that? Don't you know her? <laughs> I've never seen her before. But most of these people are mother and father's friends. What did she say to you? Was everything all right? <sighs> I'm sorry, darling. Things are just so different from the way I thought they'd be. I am terribly sorry. Knowlton, I spoke to your mother today, and she said that you... Paris! Now, what's this? Uh, now, our little vaudeville is just about to begin, so will you please come down and, and take your seats? Oh, it's just a little something that Father sometimes cooks up to entertain the neighbors, so you may enjoy it. Father never runs out of surprises, does he? <laughs> now, I know that you're going to love my first performer. Mr. Wolf tells me he's been practicing for weeks, and he assures me that he has come up with a few things he tells me have never before been seen in Westchester County.
Now, I know that uh, most of you have had the honor of meeting uh, Miss Myra Harper, and she's a delicious girl, I can tell you. And I am in a position to know, because she intends to become the wife of my son. Not only is Miss Harper a beautiful woman, but she's, uh, she's talented as well. She confided in me last night that she sings, and she confessed that she has a taste in popular music. So now Miss Harper is going to favor us with a popular song. Do you know, wave that wishbone? Uh, let me see. Yes, we've got it. All right, let's do it. They danced the minuet not so long ago. They waltzed around in pirouette, so proper, don't you know? But now the day is over, and everybody knows today there is a new step, and this is how it goes. Just wait. Was I as bad as all that? No, 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 you were wonderful. You're a delightful actress. You'll be quite an addition to our little plays. Mm -hmm. Did I shock them? No, oh, nonsense. Nonsense. Why didn't you do an encore? No. No, Tim, don't worry about it. Everything no, is going no. to be fine. I don't... Oh, Myra, uh, Knowlton has something to say to you. Now, look, I said Silence. I... Silence. I want you to do your duty now. What is it, darling? Myra? Um, there's something I have to tell you. I know you've been wondering why that door is locked. Um, 
There's a condition in our family. It's hereditary. Um, Father and sister should know everything about the family. I realize this is going to be difficult for you, but... Ah! Who is that? My first cousin. Um, he's been living up there ever since his father abandoned him. It's important that you see this because this could happen to us. I can't! You have to. Thousand, say 2,500 and you'll be nearer the truth. I got a bill today from Graham Kennels for those damn poodle dogs. They're soaking me for 200 and saying they've got to have them back tomorrow. Send them back. We're through with them. That's a mere item, including your salary and Kelly's and that fellow who did the chauffeur and the 35 extras for the show and the orchestra. That's nearly 1,200. And then there's that fellow in the attic. Oh, and all the bribes to the servants. Lord, for pity's sakes, pull yourself together and carry it through to the end. Sure. Well, take my word for it. That darn girl will be out of the house by noon. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Buck up. It's all over. You know, I thought for a minute there in the hall you were going to balk at that insanity business. It was that song that knocked the spots out of me. That was about the meanest trick ever pulled on a girl. And she was so darn game about it. Well, she had to be. Oh, Kelly, if you could have seen the way she looked at me before she fainted in front of that door. Lord, I believe she really does love me. What if there was anything I could do now? Anything in the world that would smooth this over, I believe I'd do it. Now, look here, my boy. Look here. Your trouble is just nerves. It's a since the girl was after your money. Ain't that so, Appleton? Absolutely. Go on. Go through with it. Well, if she really did love me, she wouldn't have let it all affect her this much. I mean, after all, she's not marrying my family. Well, I thought we'd try to make it pretty obvious that she is. Oh, shut up. Look at it this way. You've beaten her at her own game. You've saved yourself an unhappy marriage, 
A lot of suffering by your family. She'll creep off and never say a word about it. And your family will be none the wiser. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right, I suppose. Oh, but if you could have seen the look on her face. Good morning. Sit down. Sit down, I want to talk to you. I've got to talk to you. For heaven's sake, have pity on me. What do you mean? I've done a ghastly thing. To you, to me, to us. Look, I haven't a word to say in favor of myself. I've been, I've been just rotten. I think it was a sort of madness that came over me. You'll have to give me a hint as to what you're talking about. Yeah. Myra. Oh, my, 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 my. Myra, Mr. Whitney is not my father. You mean you were adopted? No. I mean, Ludlow Whitney is my father, but that man you met isn't Ludlow Whitney. I know. He's Warren Appleton, the actor. How on earth did you? I recognized him the first night. What, you knew? Of course. How could I help it? It just made me wonder what the whole thing was about. I'm going to tell you the whole story. I'm all ears. It starts with my mother, my real one, not that clown with those idiotic dogs. I'm her only child, and her greatest disappointment was that I wasn't a girl, so I could marry a title. She wanted to drag me off to England, marry me off to the sister of an earl, the daughter of a duke. Why, before she let me stay here alone, she made me promise I wouldn't see any girl more than twice. And then I met you. You were the first girl in my life I ever thought of marrying. Myra, you intoxicated me. It was almost as if you were making me love you by some invisible force. I was. Well, after we got engaged, I felt like my own man for the first time. Then, a letter came from my mother saying she was bringing home my wife to be, Lady Helen or something or other. And the same day, a man told me he heard I'd been caught 
by the most famous husband hunter in all of New York. Well, between those two things, I went half crazy. I came into town to call the whole thing off. But when I saw you, all I could do was send you off to Cleveland alone. Then I ran into Appleton on the street. And within an hour, he'd hatched up this ghastly plan. It was his plan, all the details. He was so persuasive, he convinced me it was the kindest way out. Finish. It went splendidly, we thought. Everything, the station meeting, the dinners, the screams in the night, the vaudeville, though I thought that was too much. Until, oh, Myra, when you fainted in that stairway and I held you in my arms, helpless as a baby, I knew I loved you. I was sorry then. By any possible chance, you can bring yourself to forgive and forget. I'll marry you whenever you say, let my family go to the devil. And I'll love you all my life. You're perfectly sure. Yes. Very well. It was a bad mistake. But if you're sure you love me now, that's the main thing. We'll go to town this morning, get a license, and I'll call my cousin Walter, who's a minister in the First Presbyterian Church. We can go west tonight. Oh, Myra, you're a marvel. I'm not fit to tie your shoestrings. I'm gonna make this up to you, my darling girl. I knew I could count on you, Walter. Well, we should be there about two o'clock. That'd be fine, Walter. I want it simple, but memorable. Hold it. Mm. It's awfully nice of you to go to all this trouble, Walter. Well, it's not every day my little cousin gets married. Mm. Now, where are you going to be going on your honeymoon? California. Mm. Huh. That sounds wonderful. Ah, uh, that must be the Winchesters. Pardon me. The witnesses. Ah. <laughs> now, now, let's not rush things. <laughs> no. In all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with her and cherish her according to the ordinance of God and the holy bond of marriage. I will. Myra, wilt thou have this man to be thy husband, and wilt thou pledge thy troth to him in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with him and cherish him according to the ordinance of God and the holy bond of marriage. Do you have one? And now, by the power vested in me by the state of New York. Oh. 
Here's to... Darn. What? What is it, darling? In all the excitement, I forgot my bag at Walter's. Oh, never mind. We'll buy you a whole new wardrobe in Chicago. But I was really counting on having it with me. I'll telephone him and tell him where to send it on. Oh, I don't think we have enough time, darling. I, do you really need don't to? Don't worry, darling. I'll be right back. Don't move till I get back. Well, hurry, darling. How'd it go, Myra? Fine. Walter, you were splendid. I almost wish you'd join the ministry so you can officiate when I do get married. Well, I rehearsed for a half an hour after you called. Wish we'd had more time. I'd have had him lease an apartment and buy furniture. How far he'll go on his honeymoon? No, he'll think I'm on the train till he gets to Elizabeth. He's getting off too easy, far too easy. I still haven't figured out what that fella did to you, Myra. You never will, I hope. It seems to me, with all his money, he could have given you everything you ever wanted. Price was too high. What price? My pride. You've been an angel, Walter. I can't thank you enough. Well, any time I can be of use to you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with his ring? That's the question. I may just send it to Lady Helen or something or other. Well. I've always had a strong pension for souvenirs. Taxi! Where can I drop you? Tell him the Biltmore, Walter. Biltmore driver.
Thank you.